Hi, everyone. Welcome to Black Renaissance. I'm your host, Kristen Ayers. You can pitch us show ideas and see archives of any of these shows and other segments on Facebook.com slash Black Renaissance, KBCW TV. Today's show brings us an opera, an ethnic dance festival, a play based on the vagina monologues you may be familiar with, featuring a former colleague, the legendary Dana King, and another colleague will discuss her story about race-based discrimination in a local shipyard. But I want to start out right now uh, with the San Francisco Opera. Uh, we are joined right now by Morris Robinson, uh, who is going to be in Showboat. Morris, it's been such a pleasure, pleasure talking to you just as we've been getting started on the show. You really have a fascinating story. So I want to talk to you, first of all, about how you got started in opera. Originally, you sort of thought you would be playing pro football, right? Well, I don't know if I was that delusional that early in the game. <laughs> I realized that I was at a, I went to a military academy and played football, and uh, I knew that I wasn't at Notre Dame or Michigan at that point, so uh, the chances of going pro were, weren't that great. But, I, you know, you have these dreams that if I work really hard and do the best I can, things may happen. Um, but that dream got snatched away really early. I mean, I played my senior year, did really well, made the All-American team, did that thing. We won a lot of games, but uh, going to the pros didn't really work out for me. But I went to corporate America after that and, and worked in corporate America for a number of years and always knew that inside me I could sing. I just never really did it, you know. Um, I sang at weddings, I sang the national anthem at sporting events. And uh, it wasn't until I auditioned for uh, the Choral Arts Society of Washington when Norman Scribner heard me and said, you know, you really should be, you know, you hear it from Aunt Susie at First Baptist Church, you sure. hear it from the, the preacher, <laughs> and you know, you don't know if their, their credibility is worthwhile, but once you start hearing people that really have credibility, you, it kind of gets your attention. So from there, it kind of took off. Yeah. It took off. We can hear that beautiful voice you have. You have an amazing <laughs> well, voice, and you. you are you are a bass singer, and you have really <laughs> done all of the classical operas, Puccini, Verdi, and yeah. right now you are starring in Showboat. So tell us a little bit about the show. Well, you know, Showboat. As I, you know, we had a brief conversation beforehand. I kind of consider it our answer, and meaning our in America, our answer to the Italian opera. Uh, you know, it is. The late 20s is when this show was written, and it's really kind of the first thing that we put together that kind of rivaled what Puccini was writing in Italy. Verdi, Verdi just before him, uh, Rossini, Mozart further back, but these, you know, the, we didn't have anything to offer really at that point in time, and uh, it's a very, you know, th this story, this show just as a show was so unique at the time because it was the first time for a lot of things. It was the first time that blacks and whites performed on stage together. I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, it's, you know, it's 19, late 20s. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking, you know, 40 years after slavery. Uh, there wasn't, there weren't a lot of opportunities for us performing wise, and especially on major stages with, uh, with Caucasians. So this, this show represents that. And within it, you know, it's kind of a microcosm of the times that it was representing, you know, the times that it was created. Uh, there, those controversies are highlighted and, and illuminated in the show itself. So Absolutely. it's a very interesting, very interesting production. Let's go ahead and take a look at a clip from Showboat starring Morris Robinson. Take a look. I get weary and sick of trying and tired of living and spread chills listening to that i mean that is it's incredible well, just my expression hearing your voice. just kind of zoned in because uh you know that the, that is kind of one of the hit tunes i mean there are several hit tunes in this show that i didn't even know came from showboat until i started studying it but everyone knows this one mm -hmm. and uh the amount of pressure it is to be a bass and seeing the hit tune is 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 interesting because i'm normally the guy in the background doo wopping for the tenor and the sopranos right. and the baritones to sing all the great uh, arias, but you know, the moment I mentioned the river, my first scene, you can kind of hear the seats rustling because they're like, oh, oh, it's about to happen. You know, they know it's coming. And, you know, there's a little bit of pressure there, but I'll, I take pride in it. Um, you know, apprehension also came into play when I was taking this role for the first time because of typecasting. Sure. And we have to be very sensitive to those things uh, because I can't make my living off of singing one thing. And I've been very blessed to sing lots of German and Italian repertoire. In fact, my debut with this company was an Italian role in Don Giovanni, where I sang the Commendatore. Um, but 
after studying the character and realizing how much dignity he had and how dignified I could play him and how cerebral he was and how forward thinking he was, I realized that this was not just a gamble or an opportunity, but it was something I needed to do. Absolutely. You know? yeah. And it looks like you've done a fantastic job. I'm certainly <laughs> excited to see it. I think everyone out there should see it as well. Uh, playing until July 2nd, June 1st to July 2nd. Yep. Is that uh, right? It's the War shows, Memorial yeah. Opera. Okay. Yeah. For more information on San Francisco Opera, please log on to sfopera.org. That's sfopera.org. And we'll be back with more Black Renaissance after the break.